Today's episode is brought to you by Card Kingdom, and for a limited time, all pre-orders of $25 or more with a Modern Horizons booster pack or box will get a sheet of stickers featuring not just the Card Kingdom logo, but some of your favorite modern decks for free. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and we are here today with a super fun, super special video. As you probably know, Modern Horizons is about to come out. I think by the time this video is up, pre-release will have happened. Official release should be this Friday, which means it is time to talk about this set in various constructed formats, and today is Modern Day, which should be an exciting day for a set named Modern Horizons, so for our modern top 10, I am joined by Krim. How's it going today, Krim? Hey, Seth. It's going well. I'm pretty excited because, uh, as you mentioned, lots of new cards going into modern. More importantly, if this goes well, I'm excited because then maybe we get more sets designed exclusively for modern. Yes, I am super hyped for this. And just, like, looking over this list... Uh, I feel pretty good. I know there's been some criticism of that, like, oh, Commander Masters or whatever. <laughs> but looking at our list, I feel like not only do we have a very solid list of 10 cards that I am pretty confident people are going to be messing around with in Modern, but we had, like, several more cards. We probably could have done 20 cards that we were both, like, at least somewhat interested in in Modern. So compared to a normal standard set where it's, like, five cards, and then you're, like, scraping the bottom of the barrel to get to ten. I feel like, even though this wasn't Force of Wills and Baleful Strixes and some of the crazy reprints that people were maybe thinking when it was announced, I still feel like this is a pretty legit modern set. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with that. There's, I mean, like, I, I think people were, might have been expecting a little too much of the set. <laughs> like, it, like they, they probably thought it was going to be extremely broken, but... Uh, I think this set was actually uh, very well designed. Yeah, and I also think maybe some of the broken stuff is stuff that could come in the future. I think being the first time in Magic's 25-year history where we're putting a set into an older format or into modern that skips standard, I think it makes sense to be somewhat safe with your first go-around and see how it goes, see what the impact of the meta is, and then maybe for Modern Horizons 2 or whatever, maybe we'll see, you know, a little bit more push stuff. Not to discredit this set, because, like I said, we have a really exciting list of cards to talk about today, and we should probably jump into it and start counting down these cards. So, coming in at number 10 on our list, we have a stepmom, giver of runes, <laughs> yeah. a callback to mother of runes. So, Krim, what are you envisioning with giver of runes in the modern format? Okay, so giver of runes seems great because it's another target creature you control, gains protection from colorless or from the color of your choice until end of turn. This is great for anything like a human's deck and stuff like that because you can give uh, stuff protection from, like, spot removal, which you know there's a lot of. There's Fatal Push, there's Path, there's Bolt, there's all these things. Uh, Mom's already, like, really good. This is a slightly more, be like, easy... Like, you know, it's not as hard to remove as Mom after, you know, like, untap with a Mom, but, like, this one, still very good if you untap with it, still able to protect all your other creatures, and that's just the biggest thing because... Modern has so many good answers and so much good removal. Yeah, I think I'm especially excited about Giver of Runes in uh, sort of like unfair creature decks. I think just playing this in your value-y creature deck, I'm not sure that it's really worth it if you're like playing, I don't know, Bant Company or something, where you're just yeah. playing a bunch of good stuff. I don't know if you need Giver of Runes, but if you're trying to protect uh, Vizier of Remedies and Devoted Druid, or a SRAM or Pure Steel Paladin, or whatever creature like is going to win you the game, then I think the value of Giver of Runes is very high. Even, like, protecting your Thalia or something in some matchups is a really huge deal, and it keeps your, like, Storm opponent in check or whatever. So, even though this isn't as busted as Mother of Runes, I still think this card has a lot of potential in Modern. Oh, definitely, yeah. And much much like you said, like, being able to protect something like a Freebooter or a Meddling Mage, something that's, like, holding on to a, a very valuable card for your opponent... Uh, yeah, that, this this card is just very good. Well, let's move on. Number nine on our list, we actually have another white card, and uh, this is one that I'm especially high on, I think, Ranger Captain of Eos. So, Ranger Captain of Eos, 
uh, is a card that I feel like has potentially multiple homes. Uh, number one, it is a human, so it can see playing humans. Uh, being able to get an on-curve body is a 3-3 three, three for 3 that also tutors up another body. Uh, one of the things you value in Modern, if you look at creatures, is unless they are just like one or two mana and way above the curve, like Tarmogoy for Death Shadow, you want to do something right away, because as Krim was saying a minute ago, there's a lot of good removal in the format. So Ranger is giving you this value right away. So so even if it eats a bolt, at least you got a 1-1 one, one out, or a 1 converted mana cost card out of the deal. And then, I think the sack ability is pretty relevant. Even buying yourself a turn, uh, playing humans, let's say, against a Crim deck, like an Esper controller boy <laughs> control deck, maybe you don't want to get Supreme Verdict for a turn, and you need one more turn to attack and win the game, Ranger Captain of Eos is going to do that, or just fizzling a combo. Like, you can wait till your opponent casts all their rituals and whatever storm stuff, and then when you they cast their last past in flames, let's say, then you just sack Ranger Captain of Eos, and basically 10 for 1 your opponent from all the cards they cast and just fizzle their uh, combo. So I think this card has a couple of homes. Uh, what do you think, Grim? Well, at first I thought this card was just like it was all right, but you know the more the more like we we talked about it, I do agree. Like the sack ability probably does a lot here. I think I it, yeah yeah I, I I agree with that. Just being able to protect yourselves from like you know a just a the, the like the turn where like the storm deck goes off or or something like that. Or yeah, very much so the board wipe turn. Uh, this because I mean there's a lot of blue white X running around right now. So yeah. I actually uh, agree with that and like entirely. Well, let's move on from Ranger Captain Vios into the world of Planeswalkers. We got two in the set. Only one is on our list, but it's an exciting one. Our second two mana Planeswalker, Ren and Six. So, uh, Krim, what are we doing with uh, Ren and Six in Modern? Um, so like as we said earlier, there's a lot of cards that just couldn't get on the list, but one of the things is the Cycling Lands from Onslaught. And I think uh, Ren and Six allowing you to, like, return a cycle land or, you know, there's people trying to make a modern lands deck. Uh, I think that it's, like, it's a two-mana Planeswalker on top of that to start off with. And it's minus, can ping anything, including, like, a Noble Hierarch or, and stuff like that. Or maybe little Infectors, who knows, right? But I, I think that maybe there is something there. Uh, like right now it's all about playtesting and trying to see if this card can work, but it seems like there's a lot of upside, especially for a two mana planeswalker. Yeah. We often talk about how the bar is really low for three mana planeswalkers, like three mana planeswalkers tend to see play, even if they don't look all that powerful at first glance, uh, the bar is even lower for a two mana planeswalker. Sure. <laughs> like you're just not investing a whole lot of mana into this. And, uh, like you said, I think you get two relevant abilities, even outside of dedicated like lands graveyard style decks just getting back like a fetch land every turn or maybe uh, a land cycle that we're going to talk about later on our list that could draw you a card every turn that adds a lot of value and ping for one doesn't seem that scary, but there's actually a lot of X ones between like Noble Hierarchs and Birds of Paradise and Champion of the Paris. There's a lot of X ones that run around in the modern format. So you're kind of like drawing an extra land every turn if you have a fetch land or a canopy land. And in some matchups, that negative one is going to be able to pick off multiple creatures even. Yeah, exactly. So many, so many X ones like right now. That's why I think this, this card is just really good. And it comes down really early. This, this actually might be. I mean, well, as you said earlier, the bar is pretty low for a two mana planeswalker because the only other one we've had is Tybalt. So this one is uh, very good. Well, let's move on to another mythic. And this is one of the cards I am most excited to play in modern. Whether it ends up being good or not, I don't even care. I'm going to have fun with it. And that is Urza, Lord High Artificer. Uh, so, Krim, what are you doing with uh, our new Urza? I like it in, like, there's definitely, there's no shortage of artifact decks that we want to probably try out, and, uh, like, I think this card will just go into, like, a prison-y kind of style deck, like the War Prison and stuff like that. I think this could, uh, I, I really like it in that style of deck. Yeah, I think one thing Karn has taught us that a Karn Struct is actually a pretty legit creature. You see this as like, that's a 1 4 for 4. That's not that exciting. But really, the beatdown power is going to come from that Karn Struct that's probably going to be easily like a 5 5 and sometimes even more than that. The other thing I love about Urza is this card just 
oozes combo potential. Like, probably the most competitive combo is Thopter Foundry Sword of the Meek. You throw Urza into that, and you have infinite mana, infinite life, infinite thought. You just go infinite, play your whole deck with the five mana ability. Also, maybe, like, Paradox Engine shenanigans. So I think this is a card, as you mentioned, there are already existing shells that you can slot Urza into, and it'll probably be really good. And it's a card that kind of opens up some different things, so like Tier th- 3 type decks, like the Thopter Sword deck, or even, like, unknown decks because of the power of being able to tap all of your artifacts to add a mana. Like, that's a really powerful ability, and a lot of times it's going to allow Urza to essentially be free. Like, you cast it and can immediately get back the mana you spent on it, maybe to, like, Cryptic Command or something during your opponent's turn. So this card just seems to do a little bit of everything. Yeah. I mean, maybe we could even get a paradoxical outcome deck, you know, like the mono blue storm deck from standard a couple of months back. (laughs) <laughs> that that seems like it could be possible. And then that's not even including that, like, it's an enter the battlefield trigger. So if you didn't start, like, blinking this with Restoration Angel or something, you just keep making more and more of these huge constructs. So, oh, I just love this card. I think it's going to be awesome in Commander, but I think it's got a shot in Modern, too. Oh, yeah, definitely. And it, it's it's so, I, I this is a very well-designed card, especially for, like, they, you know, they understand it's a four-mana card, so it's got to do a lot in Modern if it's a four-mana card. And it, this, this does that. I love Let's move on to number six on our list. And, Krim, I'm just going to let you go on like a two-minute rant about this <laughs> card because I know I know this is a Krim-style card. Kaya's Guile, kind of our Orzov Cryptic Command or Orzov, <laughs> I don't even know, Coligan's Command, something like that. Krim, tell us about how awesome this card is. Wow. I, you know, people could have thought this was maybe a card you put on the list, Seth. Come on now. But, okay, okay, it's you're right. It is a card I put on here. Uh this this card I think is yeah like you had mentioned it's like an Orz like it's an Orzov version like a Coligan's command an Orzov command whatever you want but the best thing here is that this card is great early game scales to the late game because you have entwined you can get all the modes uh, and all the modes are relevant you would be surprised how like pe- like the weakest mode on this is probably the create a one one. But that 1-1 one, one has flying, and that's still relevant because you can still block a lot of things with it. And right now, Graveyard Hate, if we're main boarding things like Niall's Spell Bomb, uh, things like that out of a control deck, or some blue-white decks are main boarding things like Rest in Peace, this gives you that without having to play something like something so kind of narrow. Because this also comes as a removal spell, which is, you know, like you always got to be red- ready for that one Boggles player. So you got it. You got it in this because you have a, like a way to Diabolical Edict them, plus eat a graveyard and or make a 1-1 one, one, or gaining four life against burn. There's just all these modes are relevant. They're, 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 it's very rare that you're going to find a match where this card is bad, in, right? When we're already playing cards that uh, like are narrow and terrible in some matches. Like like when I draw a Nile Spell Bomb or a Rest in Peace against like humans, it feels off. Awful. Awful. Yeah, I think this card, none of the modes are especially efficient on their own, but when you consider the flexibility and how it lines up with the meta, this card is very strong. Like, the floor is essentially, uh, consider a, like, a 1-1 flyer that edicts when it enters the battlefield. Like, worst case, you're gonna eat a creature and get a 1-1 flyer, but in specific... At Flash, even better, but in specific matchups, like, eating your opponent's graveyard against Phoenix or against Dredge, that's, like, a game-winning play a lot of the time. Gaining four life against Burn, that's often a game-winning lie. Like, that four life is a difference between winning or losing. So I love that this card... Its base is fine. Like, Edict make a 1-1 for 3 mana instant speed. That's fine. And then it can occasionally just be, like, game-breaking. And it gives you a way to get those effects, the Tormod Scripts effects, the Life Gain effects, into your main deck, which is often hard to do in a format as diverse as modern. So the fact that it's always going to be okay, and then sometimes it's just going to be insane, uh, makes me very excited. Like, the flexibility is just so good. Yeah, absolutely. I the the thing here is I already know I'm I'm like let's be honest here. I'm already working on lists to dial this. I like to see how many I'm going to add into the deck. So, we'll see how many uh if it's a four of <laughs> Yeah, and the other thing is, like, even if it's not a card that ends up in your main deck, this seems like a sideboard all-star. In modern, sideboard slots are at a premium, because there's so many different styles of decks to fight. So having one card that can be your Boggles hate, your Burn hate, and your, like, Dredge slash Phoenix slash Graveyard hate, that, worst case, is a sideboard all-star. Yeah, and I mean, speaking of the sideboard, because of its, you know, because, like, let's be honest here, modern where it is right now, there's a lot of things that, you know, need to go in the graveyard. 
Um, and because of how good this card is, and if this ends up being a card I can play two to three copies of in the main deck, that means I could potentially, you know, maybe lighten the load of like, you know, like, like, like of how many spots I'm using to dedicate towards a certain match in the sideboard, thus giving me more room to try to answer a more diverse, uh, field. Yeah, that's a, a very good point about a very good card. Well, let's move on. Number five on our list, we have another mythic, Echo of Eons, our new flashbacking time twister effect. So, Krim, what are you uh, playing Echoes of Eons, Echo of Eons in? That is a very good question. You see, because I don't know. <laughs> I just like this card. This card is very powerful, right? But what deck wants to play it? That's the question. I'm not really sure on that one yet i've been trying to sit down and think like there is there a deck right now that you can think of in modern that is like finally we're online the only one i can think of is maybe taking turns i could see taking turns there's been since narset has come out some uh some janky narsets i know like Connolly woods has been working on this like narset prison deck essentially where you kind of lock your opponent out after emptying their hand with narset static ability uh, obviously not a top tier deck as far as top tier decks that I don't know. I uh, This isn't something you would play in control, right, Grim? Not really, because, I mean, I don't really want them to get all their stuff back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to reload their hand, because once they've gassed out and I've one for one them a ton of turns in a row, last thing I need to do is refill their hand. Yeah, that is a concern. Maybe maybe a deck that does dump its hand, uh, like, early... Uh, is a thing. I mean, like I saw, like you know, Gabriel Nassif, a whole yellow hat, play a mono blue deck with Narset and like Archmage's Charm. Maybe this, and like he's playing Days Undoing and all this other stuff in that. Maybe this just goes in that deck. But all, all I know is that right. Although as we figure out what deck ne- wants to play this. I can tell you that the card is very powerful. Yeah, any time that you have a literal Power 9 card with very minimal work to turn it into that, like a Faithless Looting, for example, to put this in your graveyard, uh, you got to take notice of that, because, I mean, Power 9 is the best cards ever printed in Magic, so uh, cards obviously powerful, and even if it's not broken immediately, you got to think, sooner or later, someone's going to figure out how to break Echo of Eons. Yeah. Definitely. Let's move on to number four on our list. And number four isn't just one card. It is a group of cards. The Horizon Lands, the Canopy Lands, whatever you want to call them, our new Sacrifice to Draw a Card Dual Lands. So, uh, Krim, with these cards, obviously, I mean, they're lands that draw you a card. We have Horizon Canopy. People kind of know how these cards work and uh, why they are good. So what I want to know is, are there any decks in specific that you are kind of excited about for these lands? I want to say a, a good amount of decks will be excited for this. I mean, you have Burn. That would probably want it. You know, maybe uh, maybe Storm adds the blue-red one in, because why not? Uh, it's a way for them to draw, stuff like that. And then, of course, there's the Golgari one, which Golgari mid-range, as I told you, is is a... I feel like every time I queue into a Moto League, I at least run into two <laughs> Golgari mid-range decks. So, uh, like, I don't see why they wouldn't want that. Like, the just, like, Infect could even use the Waterlogged Grove, the blue-green one. Um, there's just, there's a lot of things that could, could, uh, y- use this. And most notably, once again, as I told you, is probably burn. A lot of people are saying infect is coming back. And if that's the case, then waterlogged grove. Yeah. I think, uh, I think you kind of mentioned a lot of good options there. For me, I think it's basically, these lands are fine in general, but they're especially effective in decks that one of the way that your deck commonly loses is you draw too many lands. Uh, you take a deck like Burn is a good example. Burn is a deck where the most common way for you to lose with Burn, outside of like getting hosed by a sideboard card, <laughs> is just you flood out. You draw, you end up with five or six lands on the battlefield, don't draw enough to action. Another kind of lower tier example of this is like the eight whack goblin deck that deck is insane but if you draw five or six lands things kind of fall apart really quickly lands like this are great protection for decks like that and that's not even including uh kind of like some of the synergy that you can get out of these uh, we were talking about ren in six earlier works really well with that if you're playing life from the loam works well with that maybe dredge is an additional way to get dredge activations so you can kind of build around it synergistically with like 
graveyard lands matter type theme as well. So I fully expect these uh, lands to be one of the premier cycles in modern. They're not going to replace fetches and shocks. Like that's the core of modern mana bases. But once you get past fetches and shocks, I think this is in the conversation for next best land cycle along with whatever, like fast lands might be like the third land cycle right now. So uh, I'm very excited for these. Yeah. I mean, and I'm sure also burn players are excited for this because that means everyone's life total is going to get a little bit lower. So, (laughs) Oh yeah. I'm actually kind of scared of bird. I think bird with these lands and with everyone taking more damage out of their lands, probably going to be jumping up near the top tier of the format. So I guess get your, like, what's your burn hate card of choice crib for your blue white deck? Uh, Pulse of the Fields. <laughs> and, uh, okay, Pulse and, of the Fields. Uh, but, but, like, that's more of a pet card and, like, more of a humorous card. I think probably the Angels, like Lyra, Kalidus, things like that. So, uh, yeah. I, I mean, and Those... then, of course, Timely Reinforcements. Timely is a good one. If you get really uh, Kaya's Guile. <laughs> Kaya's uh, Guile. You, uh, maybe... <laughs> core firewalker could make a return we haven't seen too many core firewalkers in a while yeah we haven't seen that in a minute so i i, I guess it's time to start uh preparing for uh, the the old whole uh, burn menace to come back yeah yeah i'm just gonna build anti-burn just yeah. like all those cards jam them all together <laughs> hope that i'd never play against like tron or anything else and just stick it to burn i mean just get your soul <laughs> sisters deck built and uh <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, let's move on to number three on our list. We have uh, a creature that is every creature type, Unsettled Mariner, our new two-drop Azorius shapeshifter, changeling, whatever. Krim, where are you playing this one? The People's Champ. Uh, yes, the Mariner <laughs> is a very, very good card. I mean, I like you've already seen Merfolk splash white, right? There was a blue-white Merfolk for a while. Um, and, you know, there's no reason for them not to try to do it again. So you have this there. You have this, obviously, in humans. Uh, and all, like, being able to, like, play this, right, That like, protect your, th- and then, like, play a Thalia. Like, that's just adding on attacks that is getting very pricey. And then back behind, like, you know, things like a meddling mage, a, a freebooter. Humans is getting a lot of new cards to play with this set. And I'm really actually terrified of the idea of that because... This card is two mana. This is our, this card is very good. Yeah. I think pretty much any creature based tribal deck in the colors is probably going to at least consider this. The protection is really rev, uh, relevant. It's a good way to slow down removal, which is kind of exactly what you want to do if you're playing like Merfolk, for example, or playing spirits or playing humans. Uh, having your creatures not die for one mana to fatal push or whatever, that's a really big deal. And uh, that kind of tempo game plan is really supported by Unsettled Mariner. So I think a lot of tribes in its colors are going to consider it, and uh, it'll be interesting to see if there's any kind of wacky, weird tribes that develop with Unsettled Mariner being part of it, because, I mean, a 2-2 two, two for 2 that's any creature type with a relevant ability, that's the kind of card that you're just going to consider kind of regardless of what tribe you're playing. Yeah, exactly, and when it when it is everything at once, that's even better, so why not? Like... I, I, I can imagine it's like going into, like you said, just any tribe deck. It's just too good not to like take a shot at. Well, let's move on. Number two on our list, we have a Pyromancer, a seasoned Pyromancer. Uh, in this card, kind of calls back a little bit to young Pyromancer, but works in a kind of different way as well. So, Krim, what decks do you think, or uh, what purposes does seasoned Pyromancer have in modern? So, I've been sitting around talking about this, and I think you, like, is this a card that maybe Mardu Pyromancer like could like try out? You know, there's. I mean, like, it says Pyromancer in the name, so yeah, yeah, Duh. yeah. You, you, just, you just throw it in there, right? <laughs> like a Mardu Pyromancer deck. You have like even like Phoenix decks and stuff like that. Why not? Like it's this card is relevant because like e, when when you first off you get its uh, ETB effect, and then it's still relevant when you like it's in the graveyard. It's just it's it's great. It's simple as that. It's just flat out good because it's always, it can always be, uh, used even in the, from the graveyard and, and, and like, you know, just casting it normal. Yeah. I mean, it's actually, man, it, it's similar to so many different cards. It's kind of reminiscent of a cathartic reunion in that you're essentially discarding two cards to draw three cards, except your third card is going to be a two, always be a two, two, but it has so much upside because uh, it could potentially be 
three bodies and four power for three mana, which is another fine deal. And then you get the extra value from the graveyard. So I think, uh, yeah, decks that are already playing Cathartic Reunion can consider this. Uh, it has some lingering souls, like tokens type applications. Uh, so I think that's another possibility. I think a deck like Mono Red Phoenix, especially, could take advantage of it where you don't have like the thought scours and some of the blue cards that, uh, is it Phoenix gets. So this gives you an additional way to stock your graveyard with your Phoenixes. Uh, and even it's just a fair card, it's not bad. One thing we've learned in Modern over the last couple of years, uh, it used to be people were very scared of, like, Faithless Uni, because it's card disadvantage. And, uh, you don't want card disadvantage, you want card advantage. <laughs> but we've learned that cards like Faithless Uni and Cathartic Reunion, even Burning Inquiry, the random card disadvantage, draw three, discard three, those effects are very strong in a format like Modern, allowing you to, like, cheat on lands and still hit your land drops, get rid of extra lands, and hit your action. So, yeah, I think all around, there's a lot of potential places for a season pyromancer to land yeah it kind of just goes in almost and if you're playing red you can pretty much play it well let's move on number one on our list and this is a card not really flashy but boy is this card going to be a beating in certain decks collector oof pretty simple basically a stony silence on a 2-2 green body so crim what are we doing with this one I mean, you're like, you're definitely shutting down the War Prison decks. You're going to try to slow those down, like all the Hardened Scales decks. Uh, you're, you're just going to, and on top of that, it's a body. So it's not like it's just this enchantment that sits there and does nothing. Uh, you can still hit them with it. So it, it's simple. As you said, it's not flashy. It, it doesn't do crazy. I mean, I guess it does a crazy thing, but it's just not very flashy, right? But it, what it does is what you want. Yeah, I think Stony Silence, it's a staple in right. sideboards. One of the most played sideboard cards. This kind of does the same thing. Yes, when you read it, you're like, okay, it's a creature. Our opponent can kill it with removal, get out from under it. The thing is, a lot of the decks that you're fighting with Collector Oof, uh, decks like Affinity, decks like Hardened Scales, decks like Were Prison, those are decks that are often cheating a little bit on removal. They're not like Blue White Control or Esper Control, where it's just a or Jund, where it's just a million removal spells. They're usually leaning on a little bit of removal, so it's hopefully going to stick around, and more importantly, being a creature comes with huge upsides, like oh, yeah. Collected Company, or Court of Calling, or Vanifar, or whatever way you're going to tutor out your creature. That's like one what green decks do in modern is find their creatures with collected companies and other tutor effects. So this is a card you can find really consistently because it's a creature, which uh, it, even though it's more fragile than Stony Silence, it does have a really meaningful upside. You know, I'm starting to like, yeah, like in those matchups, like the met decks you had mentioned, is it more fragile than uh, the, like, cause you mean like, like they don't have that much removal and out of their sideboard, they're mostly packing more artifact enchantment hate, right? <laughs> So that's actually hilarious because they're going to bring in like nature's claims to deal yeah. with Sony's Islands and you're like, oof, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they just can't stop it. <laughs> exactly. So like because they don't have that much removal and they like be it being an enchantment or artifact might have made it more vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> and plus you'd be down with it, which is a nice upside against a deck like we're prison. Having a clock is that's meaningful. A two, two is going to get in a lot of hits until they find their ensnaring bridge or whatever. So yeah. And then you can buy, slap on some exalted triggers out of this. And all of a sudden it's a, uh, it's a threat. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. Anyway, I think that brings us to the end of our top 10 modern horizon cards for the modern format. So uh, Krim, any other thoughts on, anything before we uh, wrap it up today there are a lot of pet cards in this set for me so uh that and slivers slivers i will try to make happen <laughs> i will try to play future sight i will try to make astral drift work oh this set is pretty sweet i'm really excited <laughs> yeah it's kind of funny because i don't think we talked about several of the cards I'm most excited to build around. You mentioned Astral Drift. I'm really excited for that. I'm really hyped for Ninjas as well. That's a deck I've been working on. So this is like the 10 best cards or whatever, but there's so many other sweet cards that sure, maybe they're not in the 10 best. Maybe they don't even end up being that good in modern, but I'm going to have so much fun playing them. So I am just super hyped for this. I cannot wait to see all the different decks that people are going to uh, are going to be able to build with these new cards and i have high hopes that we're going to see some really cool things going on in modern agreed like squirrel's nest 
<laughs> oh, okay. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed for Squirrel Mess. I'm rooting for you, Crib. <laughs> Look, I know a ton of people right now, their faces just lit up because they're like, finally, he mentioned the card I've been waiting for. Don't worry, YouTube. I got you. All right, I'm expecting that for a future Modern Mayhem Crim. I want to see it. <laughs> Squirrel Nest combo. <laughs> uh, all right, everyone. So that does it for today. Top 10 modern cards for Modern Horizons. Thank you so much to Crib for hanging out. Thank you to all of you for listening. And most importantly, let us know what you think. What cards are you most excited to play in the modern format? What do we get right? What do we get wrong? What other options are there? Let us know. Anyway, thanks again for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it, and we will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video! If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.